thank you for staying with Citizen Extra. As you can see on your screens, President Uhuru Kenyatta leading the nation there in commemorating the 39th anniversary of the passing of Mze Jomo Kenyatta. The President um, expected to lay a wreath at the mausoleum um, in Parliament's precinct, as has been the tradition. That memorial service is currently going on at St. Stephen's Anglican Church on Jogo Road, and we're following those proceedings live. Also on Citizen Extra today, the power of accountability at the grassroots uh, level. This is a demonstration, as you can see, incumbents being floored by newcomers. Um, and among the newcomers that's being sworn in is Anne Waigoro, who um, is Kirinyaga governor-elect. Um, and also on your other end of the screen is Mombasa County, where we are live. And Ali Hassan Joho has been re-elected for a second term as Mombasa governor. The swearing-in ceremony will be happening there um, as the day progresses. So those images are coming to you live uh, from Kirinyaga and Mombasa County, respectively. Um, let's shift gears. And my guests in studio, once again, just to introduce them to you. I'm joined by Tony Odera in the second hour of Citizen Extra. He's a lawyer. We're also joined by Brian Mutier, governance analyst. Also with us is Mark Bechache, communication strategist, and Stephen Deconio, who is a political strategist. Let's shift gears and talk about the NASA petition now and begin with the grounds for that petition um, and among the issues that NASA has raised in their prayers is the results transmission system was flawed and compromised. They also spoke about discrepancies in Form 34A, inconsistencies in Form 34B, non-designated polling stations, inconsistent voter turnout and voter bribery. We'll start um, with a legal expert um, in studio with you, Tony. Looking at the petition right now, is NASA onto something? Break this down for us. Now, I believe the uh, majority of uh, the Kenyans have uh, now well versed with this petition because it is circulating uh, out there. It's no longer a secret. And uh, <coughs> I agree with you on uh, the issues that you have uh, itemized because they are contained in the petition. And if you look at uh, the issue around result transmission, it goes to the narrative that was uh, then made by NASA chief agent, uh, Honorable Musalia Mudavadi, and uh, his deputy agent, uh, Honorable uh, Senator Orengo. And the issue was then the results that were being projected at BOMAS were not accompanied by the requisite forms. Now, at that point in time, we've gone through a process whereby then the Form 34As and Form 34Bs to then lead up to the Form 34Cs were now being availed at the BOMAS of Kenya. There was an opportunity to scrutinize the Form 34Bs before the final uh, presidential declaration of results were made. And when the declaration was made almost around 10 on that particular Friday in the night, all the Form 34Bs uh, were presumed to have been availed at BOMAS. The agents of the parties looked at them. And if after scrutiny they feel there are certain issues that they, these forms contain, they have the right, as provided in Article 140 of the Constitution, to then be able to challenge that. The issue about non-gazetted polling station, that would be an issue of evidence, in that we've got to have the gazette notice, and then we've got to have specifically where the challenge is being levied that these polling stations were not gazetted. Because during that process of election, we had certain areas that had a bit of challenges with the weather. And if there was a conscious decision made to move it to a particular area to allow the people then participate in the exercise, then that becomes a question of uh, discussion and evidence being led uh, on the same. Mm -hmm. Again, inconsistency <coughs> about the forms. And uh, for me, I say the magic is the Form 34A because it starts at the polling station and I presume by 11 o'clock on the polling day several areas had started counting and had this form 34 is. So again one has what to show... What doesn't come out very clearly though is when they talk about inconsistencies 
for instance, in Form 34A, weren't they assigned agents that were um, essentially supposed to be monitoring this process from the word go? And that is what I wanted to say. At the polling station, the Form 34A was filled at that polling station. The agent saw it, signed it. Mm -hmm. So now, if we are saying that there's a different in the Form 34A, then we have to look at the Form 34A available from the Commission. And if someone has a one with different uh, information therein, then he has to table that so that we then are able to compare the two and find out where is the discrepancy. Mm -hmm. Because it's not only one, there are several of them which remain at different points in time. Let's talk about the issue of spoiled votes, gentlemen. Um, NASA wants the spoiled votes counted um, and we know there are about 400,000 of them. So even if these votes were counted, even if they were recounted, it would make no difference whatsoever in the outcome of the presidential election, which is why I'm asking, does this petition have a good chance of success? Stephen. I still cannot wrap my mind around what uh, NASA wants uh, in, this, uh, in this petition because there's various things that they've brought up. Uh, one, of course, uh, the issue of inconsistent uh, voting, uh, the non-gazetted uh, polling stations, etc. Uh, you know, you go to court with your pleadings, and there's what you want the, the court to find in your favor, and you have to provide the evidence that supports uh, your pleadings, if you will. And so, for NASA, I think it's, there's a problem. One, if you say that the, the, the election was fraudulent, then it should follow that the MPs and governors, etc., from your strongholds that got elected in this fraudulent election should not take up those positions because it was fraudulent. Uh, of course, there's an attempt to separate the presidential from the general election, and uh, unfortunately, that's not possible. We do not have midterm elections where you elect a president first and then you go and elect uh, the other uh, representatives. And so it creates a problem uh, for, for NASA's argument. Then, in terms of these uh, inconsistencies, you have to provide proof that there are in fact inconsistencies. You have to provide proof that there are non-gazetted polling stations, and that is yet to be seen. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I think has happened, because initially NASA mentioned that they were not going to go to court, and then suddenly they went to court. Whenever you do anything in a rush, you're likely to fumble uh, in, in, in your efforts to do it in a rush. Yeah. So it's going to, to be very interesting to see one, what the uh, prevailing arguments are going to be and how the Supreme Court responds to what is brought before them. And as this process of the presidential election is interrogated, Brian, um, like Stephen here says, it certainly does have a trickle-down effect on the other elective positions if indeed um, the presidential election results um, were doctored or compromised, then that trickles down on the other elective positions as well. I don't think so, legally speaking, because the petitioner is actually, you know, confining himself to just the presidential race. The other positions have not uh, had an issue. But if uh, NASA comes out a blank... But how can they not have an issue? It was a fixed ballot process. And therefore, um, you would not essentially um, say then that um, the presidential election was compromised and that of the senator and the governor and the women's rep and the member of the National Assembly uh, was not compromised. I think we, we have to differentiate between politics and the legal aspect of it in the sense that uh, the Supreme Court received only complaints which is actually strictly on the presidential you know, outcome. Uh, they did not receive other complaints from other levels and I understand those other cadre positions if their disputes are going to be resolved at the lower courts and, also, and so on and so forth and therefore they have to restrict the court has to restrict itself within that kind of jurisdiction it cannot spill over to affect other unless you know the wisdom comes here where the, where the, the time of actually the ruling comes, comes in in the sense that uh, well, John Kerry actually pronounced himself in terms of what he saw about according to the, out, to the whole process. Of course, he po it po pinpointed some few issues here and there, and he said that these are no more deficiencies, these are no more discrepancies when it comes to electoral matters. Now, when this matter is actually brought to the table in terms of decision-making at the court, now, if the judges or the Supreme, Supreme Judges find that the 
discrepancies that were actually been pointed out were so huge they can you know now make a decision in terms of actually uh, taking us back to a re-election or maybe giving it back the, lead, the, 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 the win to NASA but if they find according to John Kerry the discrepancies were just the normal electoral processes the irregularities here and there then they can just go the way we did in 2013 mm -hmm. where they pinpointed out just some few anomalies and they said these were uh, you know just normal pr uh, issues when it comes to electoral matters however this uh, petition is a little bit different to the one for 2013 in the sense that NASA seem to have learned their game this time around in the sense that 2013 of course they were late in submitting some of the evidences that were trashed at the end of the day and therefore they could not continue with the journey of now questing for what they perceived as justice but this time around they seem to have learned their game in the sense that they have con concretized their evidence they seem to have gotten their acts together and that's why they banned the midnight oil to ensure that they present something that they perceive as watertight enough to warrant a favor in terms of the ruling mm -hmm. so the dynamics are very fluid in terms of law and I'm <coughs> so much excited to see how the you know the law minds are going to crack on this one. Mark, um, compare the Supreme Court decision of 2013, the impact that will have um, on this court's decision. Now we know that um, in 2013 the Supreme Court came under heavy criticism. Um, what are we likely to see play out this time, this time around? You know, the, the impact of the 2013 petition has uh, two sides to it. Number one, of course, um, God at the time was not given um, the victory, which was uh, 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 um, an issue for a lot of the court supporters to date. And that puts pressure on the High Court to come out as extremely judicious in their decision. They have to um, justify almost every single decision they will make. Because let's remember that both of these uh, political entities, Jubilee and NASA, have millions, uh, six million voters and upwards. Okay, those are the ones who voted. If you now just count in terms of the population of Kenyans that support these people, uh, some who are underage or some who are unable to vote. Then then you run into the tens of millions. So the, the, the judiciary has to come out very clearly and say this is why we are making these decisions. The other thing that makes the 2013 um, petition very interesting, there are very many intrigues uh, concerning when the IEBC at the time came out and said they had a green book, a red book, a yellow book, a black book. Um, there was evidence of uh, certain forms having been manipulated. And in their ruling, in the understanding of the common Mwananchi, they did not come out and explain how come <coughs> this was ignored. Now, the, the good lawyer here, Brian, says that there are normal issues within an election. Now, the question is to the common Mwananchi, we don't understand what normal issues are. To me, the, the thing should be perfect. We spent 50 billion shillings on it. But <laughs> in terms of, of the process, of the court process, you will have, number one, there is a human error that happens, okay? Um, someone wrote badly and mm. had to uh, rub it off. And There's also the sign. issue of whether or not there are handwriting experts that have been tasked exactly. with looking Forensic. into... Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Let me interject on what Mark is saying. Mm. This is a civil suit. Uh, my brother and uh, the workings of the issues of elements of probability counts this is not an issue of proving beyond reasonable doubt and my friend Odera will actually ascertain to that and therefore it is actually just uh, the judges being guided by some wisdom whether you know the threshold of the anomalies the discrepancies we are talking about here you know somewhat affected the direction of the outcome of the presidential outcome in a big way or in a small way Brian, when i'm gonna have to stop you there please um we'll be coming back to you hold your thought um we are crossing over to saint stephen's anglican church um on jogo road where the memorial service um, for the late Mzee Jomo Kenyatta is currently being held. President Uhuru Kenyatta and First Lady Margaret Kenyatta are in attendance. Let's listen. Distinguished guests, all leaders who are here, good morning. Today marks 39 years since our nation's founding father, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, departed from us. Close to four decades later, we look back with fond memories and deep gratitude for the immense sacrifices the first president of Kenya and his fellow countrymen made to lay the firm foundation that our nation has built on. Today, 
we will never know what freedom means if our founding father and other patriots had not set out to fight for our independence. Despite spending time in jail and facing threats to his life, he stood by what he believed in. Freedom and justice for his fellow Kenyans. Mzee believed that self-governance was the sure way to realizing the full potential of the Kenya people and Africa in general. More significantly, Your Excellency, Mze joined the Nairobi Municipal Council as a meter reader in 1922. <laughs> exactly 95 years ago. Through this, he taught us the concept of hard work and humility, one that we should all emulate. Your Excellency, this morning, I am sure Mze and my late dad are watching over hearts from heaven. I have no doubt that their hearts are filled with pride and their faces covered in broad smiles. Your Excellency, we have a great responsibility on our shoulders. You as the President of the Republic of Kenya today, I, as the Governor of Nairobi City County, all other leaders and the people of Kenya. The responsibility to continue uniting our people towards nation building while working hard to improve their lives. I wish to call upon all of us to emulate the patriotism and commitment to our country that they demonstrated and strive each day to make positive differences in the lives of others because that is the only lasting legacy we can leave behind for many generations to come. To the entire Kenyatta family, we continue stand with you as we celebrate the life of Mze. May God bless and rest his soul in eternal peace. Amen. Now, let me take this humble opportunity to welcome His Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable William Samoy Ruto, to make his remarks. Welcome, Your Excellency. Mheshimiwa Rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya ndugu yetu Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta First Lady Margaret um, Mama Ngina Kenyatta ambaye ni mama wetu wa taifa Askofu wetu wa kanisa hii ndugu wa Kenya Hamjambo um, This is another great morning that we are gathered here to celebrate the life and the times of Mze Jomo Kenyatta. I want to associate myself with what has been said here that Mze made together with many comrades that worked with him made a huge contribution to bringing Kenya together as a nation and he did so under very difficult circumstances and made huge sacrifices to get our country to be born as a nation and today and this morning specifically I am sure that Mze Chomo Kenyatta is proud, wherever he is in heaven, to see what has become of the country that he founded. He would be pleased that two things happened in this election that we've just concluded. 
that this is an election that was canvassed on the basis of the unity of our country and the development of our country. Two very cardinal things that Mzee Kenyatta believed in. And I want to say that I am confident that my boss, the President of Kenya today, is a man that we can trust to deliver on those two items upon which this election was contested. And I want to tell uh, fellow Kenyans, we were, we were told then that it is not possible to win an election on the basis of a development agenda. But today, in Kenya, I want to say without fear of contradiction that the two most important things that informed this election was the exercise that the President started in building bridges of friendship, of brotherhood and of unity among us, all the people of Kenya. And that is why today Jubilee is a party with a national face. And secondly, this election was contested on a development record. That is why matters to do with the SGR and roads and energy and education were the biggest issues in this campaign. Again, confirming what our founding fathers fought for. I am sure that they are proud wherever they are that today elections in Kenya are on the basis of issues and less and less about ethnicities. And therefore, this day, as we celebrate the life of Mze, we must remind ourselves not to lose hope on any part of our country or on any community or on any side of our nation but continuously we must build those bridges of brotherhood and friendship and unity of the entirety of the nation of Kenya and I am confident that um, going into the next five years God is going to grant our president the favor and the wisdom to be able to put this country together so that we can make our founding fathers, including Mze Jomo Kenyatta, proud wherever they are, as they see the nation they helped bring to being moving places or going places. So with those many remarks, um, ladies and gentlemen, I do not wish to say more than that. It is now my pleasure and duty to ask His Excellency, the President of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, to make his remarks. Mr. President. Uh, please be seated. Thank you very much. The Right Reverend Joel Waweru, Bishop of Nairobi Diocese, the ACK, all the clergy, the leadership of St. Stephen's Church, fellow Kenyans, good morning. Let me begin first and foremost by taking this opportunity to thank St. Stephen's, to thank our bishop for welcoming us to this church this morning as we celebrate the 39 years since Mzee Jomo Kenyatta left us. 
Let me begin by saying that we are celebrating also a life, a life of a man who together with his colleagues dedicated a good part of his life towards attaining the independence of Kenya and ultimately for 17 years led this country as its founding father and laid a very solid foundation for us to build on. We celebrate the life of a man who loved this country and loved her people. A man who enjoyed the diversity of our different cultures but recognized the importance of people speaking in one voice working together as a Kenyan people and I believe this is the foundation that the Kenya of today is built on because without that unity without that respect for our diversity even our development agenda is not attainable. I also believe today we are celebrating years of Kenyans being able to govern themselves. Not that we have not made mistakes, yes we have, but I believe as a country we have learned from our mistakes and at each and every step move to rectify and to be better as we move on. Over the years, we have also entrenched our democracy. And this is a call I keep asking our people that as we respect our cultural diversity, let us also be able to respect our ability to have differing opinions. But differing opinions do not mean enmity. We are still one people. That is the essence and the core of democracy and that is why even in this last election I keep stating again and again there is no single Kenyan who went to the ballot and made a mistake every Kenyan voted where he or she desired and that was their right but there comes a time when a decision is made and then we move forward together as a people focused on one common vision, one common dream for our nation Kenya and for future generations. And I believe if we can keep that spirit going, that is the spirit of our forefathers. Our ability to agree to disagree when necessary but to come together with a common objective of building a great prosperous nation called Kenya that belongs to all of us and this is the mission that we have and 39 years down the road I believe our forefathers would be proud of the achievements that we have made. And I look forward, you know, it was very interesting, <laughs> people tend to call me Kijana, Kijana, but I, I was just listening to Bishop here, saying that he was 18 when Muzay passed away. I was also 18. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we are not we are not that young. The young people are the Sonkos and the Williams of this world. <laughs> but I think the essence really is that we also have an obligation. We also have an obligation to ensure that we leave a country and a people that who can forge ahead for another 3800 years long after we have left 
because of the foundation that we shall also have set and that is our dream that is our objective I also wish to take this opportunity to thank this wonderful choir indeed as an 18 year old this choir went a long way towards calming us giving us solace during a very difficult moment in our lives they were together with us almost every single day and I believe it was not just us as a family but also to the entire nation and to that we shall ever remain grateful to you to those who came before you as a family we are indebted to you as a nation I believe you played a critical role in ensuring that the country stays together the country remained united and I think I can say with a clear conscience that you were part of helping Kenya move forward after a very difficult time when people did not know what was going to happen but your songs and the words in your songs really encouraged Kenyans and gave Kenyans hope that there was a future after that unfortunate event so Asante Nisana Asante. Natukisha maliza yale ambaya kombele yetu na mungu atujalie ushindi na mimi najua atatujalia ushindi tutawakaribisha mkuje ndiyo tukaya tukaya pamoja namna hiyo sini hivyo lakini kwa leo I would like on behalf of our family to make a presentation of a processional cross to this choir as a memento to you and a thank you to you for everything that you have done for us and for this country. za kuketi Your Excellency tumefurahi tumeshukuru sana uh, hatuna mambo mengi sana yamebaki nasi kama ishara ya shukurani kwako kama nilivyosema nasi tuna picha ile ambayo mzee alipigwa na wanakwaya wale wa zamani sijui iliwekwa wapi James uh, tuletewe hiyo hizo picha pokea moyo wangu
We have two, three portraits. One we would like to give it to you, it's the same portrait. Then the other one we want to give the, uh, our mom, the former first lady. And the third one we want to give our sister, Nyokabi. So you are excellent.
Please be seated. President Uhuru Kenyatta there at the St. Stephen's Anglican Church um, on Jogo Road as the nation commemorates the 39th anniversary of the passing of the nation's founding father, uh, the, president of the, the first president of the Republic of Kenya, the late Mze Jomo Kenyatta, who is also uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta's father. Um, and Uhuru Kenyatta there talking about the strides we have made as a nation uh, 39 years later. Um, my panelists in studio, of course, um, let's get your comments um, on this being the 39th anniversary of the passing of Mze Jomo Kenyatta. Brian, I think um, you're the last person that was speaking when sure. we took the break. Okay. Um, this, of course, being a very significant day for the nation um, coming um, very closely to the just concluded general election mm -hmm. and of course um, President Uhuru Kenyatta there talking about um, how proud he is um, to be to have been part of the legacy that has been created um, since his father passed on. Let's get your thoughts. Yeah, I, I think I'm concerned about uh, the way we have devalued such kind of uh, events in our country. Our patriotic uh, levels or pat levels of patriotism seems to have sunk a little bit low in the sense that uh, when this activity is happening when the country is commemorating this event the whole the bigger population is not even aware that uh, this is happening and they are not even uh, drawing any sort of affectionate from this kind of uh, affection from this uh, event and that uh, boils down to the issue of national values how do we inculcate values where we are able to appreciate our history our heritage as a country and at the same time take pride as a country that as uh, uh, is coming from somewhere so to me if we are not taking stock of this we are not on this as a country to me is a low level is a low moment for us as a country and therefore it's a matter of actually reevaluating our systems our values our national values and see how we can again bring this kind of pomp and color that we used to see you know coming up together with a situation where we are appreciating our leaders at the same time taking sense and a little bit of uh, you know patriotism in what we have come of age as a country but again if you look at the way we you know we we, we revised our holidays. Uh, we came up with the Mashuja Day, but this as an event which Mark commemorates the death of our first founding father. I think it has to find some space in that calendar and inculcate some values, a sense of belonging as a nation. Mm -hmm, Mark? Uh, but <coughs> the interesting thing about um, Kenya's history 
is there is a section of the nation that feels like we have an edited version of the history that is leaning on one side. And I think that's where the decision was made to remove Kenyatta Day and Moi Day and replace Kenyatta Day specifically with Mashuja Day, which was a more inclusive um, uh, holiday where we're not just recognizing the founding father, but we are uh, 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 recognizing the Kapenguria Six, we are recognizing uh, Pio Gamba Pinto, we are recognizing Tomboya, we are recognizing every person who was an he a hero, including Dead and Kimathi. And that has been part of the conversation. I think what we need to, to push for actually is a more inclusive patriotic culture where we are celebrating the Masinde Muliros of the Luya, the Elijah Masindes of the Luya, uh, the, the, the um, Oginga Odingas of, of, the, of, the, of the Luo, where we have a more inclusive national narrative is the direction we need to go as a country. Because the reality of the matter is independence in South Africa was not just Nelson Mandela. Uh, you've got the Steve Bickles, you've got all these people who fought for that independence and therefore for those holidays needs to be inclusive and the other thing that we need to do is we need to look at the education we are offering our children in terms of the local curriculum what it is because we've reduced on what was civic education and now we have uh, people who've grown up and they were going to vote and if you ask them what did Raila Odinga do for this country they don't know uh -huh. you understand and 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 that's the issue and we, we I think we we are running the danger of going the American route where one time they did a poll and one in ten Americans did not know who the sitting president at that time was. So in Kenya what we need to do is have uh, inclusivity in the narrative of our nationhood. Inclusivity in the story of our nationhood. And that's where we, 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 we came up with Mashujadi. And my, my, I think my thinking is whereas my brother here is has it, having the nostalgia of Moi Day and when he ah. used to take <laughs> Nyayo milk, I think where we are moving into is the space yeah, where yeah. we are inclusive, where we celebrate every hero that there was and we don't look at our history. This is the founding uh, father. Yeah, this is the founding father. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I'm not saying that. Let's get Steve <laughs> and uh, Tony as we <laughs> go, go to the top of the hour. Steve. Yeah, I, I think we, uh, we cannot equalize everything. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a first president of uh, uh, Kenya and uh, there is what he contributed and it is what we continue to enjoy, he and his uh, team of leaders. And I think also the, we have to get away from identifying people uh, with, for example, my, my colleague here just said that uh, um, Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga of the Luo. He's not of the Luo, he's of Kenya. <laughs> and, 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 so, and we are all very much intertwined. Uh, as much as we have our own tribes and you know, where we came from, everyone has a history. Uh, but nevertheless, we should not um, uh, categorize people in that way. There are heroes, there are people who stand out for what they did, what they contributed, where they were, and therefore uh, we need to recognize them and appreciate them uh, for what they are. And Tony? Uh, my take on it is uh, this country has very rich history. And uh, some of us who are students of history and civics then uh, were able to benefit learning a lot from this. It would be important to ensure that even the generations that are coming after us do not lose this historical touch. We may not profile it to certain individuals, <coughs> but I think it would be a good idea for them to have the understanding that we also had about the history of this country and to go back a step and look at our attitude towards patriotism, mm. towards some of these events, and then also be able to have these events a little bit highlighted and opened up so that majority of the Kenyans who want to be able to share in this celebration can have the opportunity. Because it reminds us of very important things, and we can't trash it because Mzee Jomo Kenyatta is the first president of this country. He fought for the independence of this country, albeit not alone, but you can see the role even the others that they were with gave it to him. Many thanks um, for that. We are taking uh, a break. We're back with a final hour on Citizen Extra this morning. And um, that's coming up very shortly after this break. Stay tuned.